guys, Dan here with Total Realty Advisors. Today I'm at Former Future Brewing, interviewing Sarah, one of the owners. So Sarah, what? Uh, when did you guys open up for business? We opened February of 2014. So what, what made you guys select this location and also how, how long were you looking before you found this place? This location we saw as a very diverse location also growing and we wanted to be in an environment that hadn't necessarily reached its peak yet or wasn't close to it, but we knew had a lot sure. of growth potential. The homes along here still, still have that kind of old charm, mm -hmm. but it's also, uh, they're building up some, some more modern uh, spots as well. So Sarah, tell me a little bit about the design of the space and, and what kind of inspired you and what the inspired the, the ambiance in here. Sure. Uh, really, I mean, former future, our namesake, it's uh, really a blend of both the past, but also the present, and kind of alludes to the future. Um, these uh, bar tops are 1950s Cessna airplane wings. Um, I actually saw that at my hair salon and wanted wow. it for my bar. Uh, very adamant, actually, about that because it alludes to something of the past, but also, I mean, kind of the shininess of it. Sure. It's very futuristic in its own way. A lot of people call us a steampunk brewery, but we're certainly not trying to be steampunk. We just appreciate that aesthetic as part of our aesthetic. Almost everything in this bar is repurposed. Mm. So from the tables to the light fixtures, um, the bar top, obviously, even all the wood is repurposed. And we like the idea of taking something out of previous life and giving it a future life. So James is the brewmaster and owner, right? And when, what was his experience prior to starting um, Former Future? Well, funny enough, we weren't really into beer before we opened Former Future, um, but he did homebrew at, at home uh, back in college. He went to school up at CSU in uh, Fort Collins, and he brewed a, a, a fat tire clone as one of his first beers, and then also went to school for microbiology. So, of course, he was okay. interested in kind of the biological aspect of beer and fermentation science. Okay, excellent. And so has that played strongly into the way that he brews and the brewing process that you guys use? Definitely. I would say that um, most breweries, they use more varieties of hops and grain in most of their beers. We tend to use more varieties of yeast. It's just kind of how we shine okay. each beer. We like to use a different type of yeast in each one to showcase that yeast. So what inspired you and James to start Former Future? Really a tour of New Belgium inspired us and okay. drinking lawfully for the first time. Ah. Um, that was really kind of what switched the light for us and inspired us just from that one sip to want to start a brewery and especially a brewery that focused on sour beers. Well, sir, tell us a little bit about your yeast culture. Do you guys live culture or do you purchase virgin yeast and, and use in every batch? Well, we started out purchasing new yeast with every batch, um, but now we're actually trying to repitch batches. For former future, um, we've done a little bit of both. For Black Project, we are capturing all of our yeast from the air, so we're using a cool ship, which is a traditional Belgian okay. way of brewing beer, capturing all native microflora in those beers, and only repitching that yeast. We're not pitching any lab yeast at all in those beers. What's most unique about your brewing process? I would say what's most unique is our use of yeast. Um, Again, a lot of breweries repitch the same yeast mm. for different beers, and we're trying to really showcase what each yeast can do. What's the most unique or interesting ingredient that you guys either do or would ever use in a, in a beer? That's a good question. We actually used rosemary in a beer recently. Um, interesting. It's a potter's beer, which is a Belgian style of beer that monks would brew during, uh, to consume during Lent. Um, very low alcohol, but very malty. And we um, added rosemary to give it kind of a savoriness a little more flavor since it is so low alcohol it's a little yeah. better on the palate interesting now is is that one you keep on tap all the time or is that a special it's actually a new release? one for us we've okay. only brewed it once um one that we keep on tap all the time salted caramel porter um we added salt to the porter this was actually a homebrew recipe that we started with and at that point someone described it as face planting in the ocean it was very salty and uh, now it's a little more sweet um definitely our best seller on tap we keep on tap all the time Okay, so would you say that's your flagship beer? Yes, definitely. So Sarah, do you guys believe in, in food pairing with beer? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what do you recommend pairing with your flagship beer, the, the salted caramel porter? Actually, one of the best things that I've ever tasted with that beer is from Maria Empanada um, okay. on the corner here. They do a banana Nutella empanada, and it is divine with that beer. Pairs one. Well, guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. Um, 
We can help you out with all your residential, commercial, and investment real estate needs. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to catch all the future videos of other breweries we're going to be interviewing. Also, like us on Facebook and come in and enjoy a beer with Form of Future. Cheers. Cheers.